Welcome to Talk Wargaming and this video is going to be a combination of product review and guide to, as you can probably guess by what's in front of me here, paintbrushes, more specifically the Army Painters range of Wargamer brushes. So as you can see here there's a quite a nice selection of brushes and I'll be looking at all of these in the video. So let's zoom in and get a closer look at the brushes. So the first brush to look at will be the um, Wargamer Vehicle Terrain Brush, so as you can see it's the largest of, of the uh, Army Painters selection. It's a flat, quite a large size brush here which is perfect for dry brushing uh, scenery and terrain and it's really good for getting um, quick application on large areas where smaller brushes would just take much too longer to do so. So the next two brushes are the um, dry brushes, the large dry brush and then the small dry brush. Now the most kind of uh, the most obvious feature of these brushes is the the tapered cut to the bristles. Now both of them ha are uh, flat bristles but this taper allows you to hold the brush much more comfortably when you're dry brushing. You don't have to hold it vertically down to get the full flatness of the surface. You can just hold it at an angle like so. Now um, what is nice about these kind of dry brushes is that they also hold up very well to uh, abuse after a while. So if I just show you my uh, one of the ones I've been using for maybe about up to about eight months now. You can see just how well they hold up. So here are the two brushes that I've had for a while now. Um, the small dry brush and the large dry brush. As you can see, the bristles are still uh, retain their structure and they're they're still pretty uh, soft to move. At the moment, I do have some sort of um, it's like a, a paintbrush conditioner on these, and this is what I use to actually keep these brushes in good condition. So. I mean, there are a few slight sprays here and here, but I mean, most of the line of the bristles are still pretty flat. I mean, it's more obvious than this one here. Now, I've used these quite a lot, and dry brushes do tend to get a lot of a brief, so for them to last this long and still be in this quality is excellent. Next up, we have the, the Wargamer Monster Brush, and as you can see from the bristles there, it's a, quite a large brush, and it's my personal favourite for applying washes and quick shades. Um, what is also interesting about this brush is the um, it's made from Touré synthetic uh, fibres which hold paint um, much better than sable brushes do and it allows you kind of, if you're loading this brush up, you're not just kind of drowning the model that you're painting at the time, So, which is also what makes it excellent for um, doing washes and quick shades as I mentioned earlier. Now as with the, uh, the dry brushes, I do have one that I've been using for quite a while so I'll just show you the quality of that as well. So here is my um, my trusty um, Wargamer Monster Rush. You can see it's, it's, it's quite worn, so I've used it a lot. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, I've used it for probably for about eight months now, and I've been using it quite a lot for um, applying quick shades and washes, and also doing large areas of paint. And if I compare it to the the new one on the left here, you can see that it's still retained its shape pretty well. It's gonna it's squashed out a little bit slightly, but it's still pretty much the same as it was and it still has it's still pretty soft. I mean obviously not as soft as this brand new one but um yeah it's just a testament to show that if you do actually look after your brushes you can actually get a lot of life out of them. Especially these army painter ones because they're excellent quality and you do get your money's worth. Here we have the Wargamer Regiment brush which is kind of the general all around workhorse of your paintbrush collection. What's nice is it's large enough to cover areas such as shields and armor plates pretty quickly but still retains a nice enough point to be able to get into all those um hard to reach places without overspilling onto other areas as well. So if you kind of combine this paintbrush and say the, the monster brush, you can actually probably just pretty much just paint space range with just these two here. So this little stubby little thing is actually the uh, Wargame stippling brush. Now this is excellent if you want to apply weathering to vehicles and infantry, you just kind of dab it on like that and it creates like a, a mottle effect. So it's a, if you want to do some weathering on your vehicles or some larger uh, units such as Centaurians or anything like that, then this is the brush to use. So here we have the Wargamer character brush, which is excellent if you're planning on doing uh, faces and uh, details on hands and armors and anything like that really. So it's it's best if you kind of reserve it for your characters and you want to achieve that extra little bit level of detail. So with the uh, with the detail brush, we're actually starting to get down to the, uh, the realms of the more specialist brush. Now these are uh, reserved for jobs around kind of like faces, uh, so if you're just painting teeth or you want to apply a small amount of uh, wash or glaze to the grooves of someone's face. Uh, it's also good if you want to apply those uh, tiny little black lines of text that you see on purity seals as well. So this brings us to the insane detail. Now as you can probably imagine that you, if you're going to be using this brush you're going to be doing things like highlighting teeth and fingernails and all those tiny little um, 
aspects of a model that if you're really keen on getting the best paint job you can, you really want to be making sure you pick, pick them out. And this is just fine enough to make sure that you get all those details. So you may be thinking that as, um, that's as far as someone can go with the size of a paintbrush, but you'd be wrong because the Army Painter have created the, uh, the Psycho Brush, and I'll tell you just why it's called the Psycho Brush. If you look at the bristles here, you can see it's pretty much about five uh, bristles just kind of grouped together there. And if we compare it to the insane detail, you can actually see just how small they are. And if I just kind of put my fingernail in there so you can kind of get a better view as to how small these things are. Now, this is kind of the things if you're looking to do um, painting eyes and irises and uh, single-celled organisms, things like that. So the Psycho brush is definitely a specialist brush that you need a, um, a keen eye and a steady hand to use. So the brushes that we've been looking at so far have kind of been a mixture of uh, sable hair and also synthetic bristles. Um, but this leads us to the uh, Kalinsky uh, Masterclass brush, which is a nice black handled there. Um, now this uses a Kalinsky um, hair, which is from a weasel. Um, this is kind of certainly deemed some of the finest um, hair to use in paint brushes. It's, it's an excellent kind of material to use because um, it's, it's got like a natural springiness to it so that when you're painting you don't feel like you just, your brush is just kind of just bending as you're trying to paint so and I mean these are really fantastic and this is kind of a similar si in size to the detail brush that we saw um, for the sable hair so this is kind of uh, probably reserved for those special paint jobs that you want to really go to town on. So you may have noticed that through this video, the, uh, some of the paintbrushes had a quite a strange handle shape. Now, if I kind of get this brush here, you can see exactly what it is. It's like a, um, a slightly kind of triangular shape. And the reason why that is is because it actually makes it very easy to hold the brush. Now, because you're pressing on like, the, the three main points there, you've got the, uh, your knuckle there, your fingertip there, and then your thumb as well, you get a really good grip of this brush. So it makes it excellent for those really fine details, especially when you think, think of things like the Psycho brush. Um, this shape handle is a, you wouldn't think it, but it does make a lot of difference. So that was the uh, the Army Painters range of Wargamer brushes. Now I have to say that these are a fantastic um, set of brushes. You've got all these uh, brushes specific for different jobs and different sizes and different levels of detail as well. The price of these brushes is, is a very reasonable considering that if you actually look after them for a while you can get a very uh, long lifespan out of these brushes. So it is a real investment. So if you if you pick off a few of these, you'll be able to use them for a long time. Now all of these brushes are actually uh, available separately, but you can um, find them all in this uh, War Games Mega Brush set. So this contains all of the uh, the brushes that I've seen of uh, discussed today, and you can get them all in this uh, handy little box set. And it gives you, as well as the brushes, you also get like a a nice little uh, how to paint guide as well, which has got some quite handy tips in here. So if you're looking for a set of paint brushes, which is a uh, reasonably priced, um, will last you for a while and is excellent to work with, then I highly recommend picking up the Army Painters range of paintbrushes. So for more videos uh, like this one, you'd be sure to check out TalkWarGaming.com. Um, on there you can find editorials, tutorials, news items and reviews as well. Um, a link to that will be in the description. And to be kept up to date with our latest videos, be sure to subscribe to us as well. Thanks for watching and goodbye.